was around January 2016 when it happened. I felt lonely since I had been single for a long time, and despite the advice of my family and friends, I went on Match.com to meet someone who could finally make me feel whole again. As cheesy and small-minded as it may sound, I just wanted to spend my Valentine's Day with someone special, instead of keeping my eyes glued to the television all day while munching on some Cheetos all by myself. After browsing every profile, I finally stopped looking when I found Emma. Everything about her was attractive. She was definitely my type. At that moment, I felt she was the perfect match. So, with no time to lose, I messaged her immediately, hoping she wouldn't give me the cold shoulder. Hours passed, making me feel edgy, but the wait was worth it. When she finally replied, my heart skipped a beat, and we have kept in touch ever since. We called each other day and night, talking about everything and anything, and as the weeks passed, I felt we had grown closer. So. Two days before Valentine's, we decided to meet up. Of all the fancy stuff going through my head, taking her to a hotel was the best choice. It meant good food and a luxurious room, but the most exciting part was yet to come with her and I on the bed. So, I checked in a day earlier, intending to spice things up a little as I set up the room to create the perfect atmosphere. The following night, Emma was set to arrive. I'm not going to lie, I was nervous as hell, as if it was a first date all over again, but I didn't want to back out now. So, I gave her the details, including the hotel I was at and the room I was waiting in. At first, I was afraid she'd be under the impression that I was desperate, but when she told me on the phone that she was on her way, it boosted my confidence. About half an hour later, I heard a knock on my door. I took a deep breath and opened it, expecting to see the attractive woman I saw in the photos on Match.com. However, I was disappointed when she looked <gasps> subpar, totally different from the pictures I had seen. She wore a sleeveless shirt and a short flashy skirt with a bulging belly, and dark round circles around her eyes, making her look like a zombie. Moreover, her hair was disheveled and greasy, like she hadn't washed it in days. She was a freaking catfish. I couldn't believe I was being scammed, but despite my dissatisfaction, I was so desperate to be with someone on Valentine's Day that sleeping with her was my only chance. We had a little chat where she told me how thrilled she was to finally meet me in person, and that I was more handsome in real life than in the photos. I wished I could say the same thing about her, but I held back and decided not to comment on her physical appearance, knowing she'd leave me. <gasps> then, as I was about to give her her Valentine's present, her phone rang, and when she picked it up, I heard her say, Yeah, he's here, sitting next to me. I felt my throat dry up. My muscles stiffened. I looked at her with confusion, wanting to ask what was happening. Um, Emma, who was that on the phone with you? I said as my voice cracked. She didn't say a word. She only stared at me with a blank expression. Then, suddenly, her vigor and interest in me vanished, and I could tell that something was wrong. I just couldn't pinpoint what it was exactly, but then I saw the most disturbing, most horrific thing I have ever saw in my life. A masked man barged in the room, armed and dangerous, saying, Get down on the floor, now! I kneeled down with my face touching the ground, sweat pouring from my body as I raised my hands to surrender. Stop, stop! Please, let's talk about this. I didn't do anything wrong. Just let me go. Shh. Lower your voice. The sooner you cooperate, the sooner we'll be done with this. Emma scowled. I began to tremble uncontrollably, complying with everything they said as they threatened me to get into their vehicle parked in the back. Then, as we walked to the parking lot, the man said under his breath, Don't try anything funny. You got that? This isn't the first time we've dumped a dead body. I swear I couldn't breathe. And even when I saw many people pass by, they were unaware of what I was going through. With no other option, I got into the vehicle, and the couple gave me a hell of a ride. The masked man drove so fast that I thought we would crash at any moment. What do you want from me? I, I don't have much. I, I, I swear. Shut up. One more word from you, and your family will see you on the news. I was afraid my life was going to flash before me. I might have peed my pants, convinced there was no way to escape. Then, with every chance they got, they forced me to withdraw money from several banks around the city. It was crazy. My head was spinning. I didn't know when, if, or how this nightmare would end. I just wanted to go home. I didn't care if I was alone. Anywhere but here was better. Then, after the sixth bank, they made me strip to my underwear, which I hesitated at first. But when they threatened to hurt me, 
I couldn't say no, and after giving them what they wanted, they kicked me out of the vehicle in the middle of nowhere. It was so dark that I couldn't even see the path I was trekking. There were no light posts nor glowing street signs to give me direction. I was lost, but at least I was alive. Since then, I couldn't look at Valentine's Day the same again. I deleted my profile on Match.com and decided to meet people the right way instead of going online. I didn't know that wanting someone so much could lead me so close to death. Now, whenever it was Valentine's Day, I just spend it at home alone, keeping the doors locked and the house secured. The story was inspired by a real life case that went down on Valentine's Day of 2016. The male and female shown here were the alleged culprits. The animation pretty much sums up the whole ordeal in a nutshell. The assailants have been accused of kidnapping and robbery, which is punishable by 10 to 20 years in prison. For the last six years, I've been living in fear as a single woman all the way through my 30s and into my 40s. I am forced to fear for my safety, and here's why. It started on a Valentine's Day. I was doing my typical morning routine of watering the plants that grow around my small bungalow home. When I got to the front of the house, I noticed an unusual letter sitting on my porch. It was in a brownish envelope, and on one side had five crudely drawn X's one big one and four smaller ones circling it. I opened it on my doorstep, and inside was a Valentine's Day card with the cat picture on it. I then opened the card and began reading it, and that's when this growing <gasps> sensation of nausea and vertigo started to tell me something was very, very wrong. It was a handwritten note full of disturbing things. There were references to my daily activities, revealing that I was being watched, and other sickening comments about me and how I looked and whatnot. But even with all of that, they still had the nerve to sign off on the letter saying, Lots of loving kisses on Valentine's Day to my sweet little oblivious victim. From your longtime secret admirer who has now become your stalker, Gordon. And at the bottom of the letter, the same symbol of the five X's. By the time I finished reading it, my hands were shaking. I didn't know of any Gordon. Freaked out. I phoned the police right away, but I was rather disappointed with the response I got. They said all they could do was file a report and take the letter as evidence. Other than that, they didn't have enough to go off of to look for him. In any case, I didn't get much shut-eye on that first night. When morning finally came, I cowered until I heard the postman come and go, and then I peeked through the blinds to see if there was another brownish envelope with X's on it. Thankfully, there wasn't. A few more days passed and no more letters from Gordon came in, and slowly I was able to feel less paranoid. I started to rationalize the event as perhaps a prank pulled by some neighborhood kids. But unfortunately, that was all out the table on the day when I walked out the door to go to work. And I saw another letter on my porch. I knew it had to be from Gordon, due to the five X's on it. I didn't want to touch it, but part of me felt like I had to read it. I picked it up and started to unravel the contents, and again. On the front of the card was an odd looking cat image. On the inside was the handwriting of an insane person confessing their love and admiration for me. He wrote much more in this letter, talking about the things he wanted to do to me. Things that gave him pleasure to think about doing. Dreams about kidnapping and imprisoning me. All expressed in painstaking and vulgar detail. And again, he signed off with a chummy tone while remembering to remind me that I was in danger saying, I hope you know that I think of you all the time. And I wish that we will be together very soon. Endless, messy love and kisses from your stalker and soon to be killer, Gordon. And then capping off with his signature X. I stood there for a brief moment as the adrenaline built up and then boiled over, sending me into a deep panic. Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops! I went inside and immediately locked all the windows and doors before I got my phone to alert the authorities again. However, the response was the same. 
They took the letter as evidence and added it to the pre-existing case file, then basically told me to stop overreacting. I tried to reason with them saying I felt I was in danger, but they brushed me off like they had bigger things to worry about. And to nobody's surprise, about a week later, my worst fears were realized. It was in the middle of the night, and I was still unable to settle down from receiving Gordon's last threatening letter. I had been tossing and turning in bed for hours when I first heard noises coming from outside my bedroom window. I shot up out of bed to quickly hide underneath it. When I stopped moving, I could hear the sound again, and it was clearly footsteps, like someone was walking around my house, just outside my bedroom, getting closer and closer, until it finally stopped. I had to cover my mouth to keep from screaming when I saw the silhouette of a man looking through my window. I knew it had to be that Gordon freak. I went frozen stiff, hoping he would just go away, but then he tapped on the glass and started talking like he knew I was in there. Hey beautiful, are you, are you sleeping? sleeping? I, forgot I forgot to give you something, something from last, last Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. I wanted to vomit, but I was forced not to move a muscle. I just waited in agonizing silence, praying he would just go away. After several excruciating minutes passed, I never heard him walk away. His silhouette was gone, but I felt he was still outside my house. I could feel the fear inside me growing, convincing myself that if I continued to let him stand out there, it was only a matter of time before he couldn't resist the temptation to break in. At last, I made a break for it, climbing out from under the bed, grabbing my phone from the nightstand, and running to the other side of the house as I called the police yet again. I stayed on the phone with the operators as I cowered in my linen closet, waiting for help to arrive. I was quite disappointed when the cops came and Gordon had already left the scene. All they found was another letter on my doorstep, but I didn't bother picking it up. I just let the cops take it, and that's all they ended up doing. They literally made no effort to find the man who continues to torment me to this day. Since then, I have shared my story with the internet, urging anyone who sells letters, works at the post office, or thinks they recognize the handwriting to contact me. Over the years, my paranoia has grown worse and worse, but I don't want to move away from my home. I refuse to admit defeat to this scumbag. Still, it strikes fear in me to know that Gordon is still out there and still knows where I live. This story was inspired by a real life case regarding an alleged stalker quote unquote named Gordon. The images below are photographs of the Valentine's Day cards with the distinguishable cat image and disturbing messages with the signature five X's. Since then, the culprit has been caught. Here is the image of him, revealing Gordon to be a 68-year-old man who had been obsessed with the victim for years. He has since pled guilty to one charge of stalking. Desperation around Valentine's Day can get a girl into trouble. Hopefully it's just an embarrassing date that you have to live down over time. But for me it was much worse. I was in college, and the dreaded date of February 14th was getting dangerously close while I still had no one to call my own. My friends were all over Tinder and kept telling me to get on it too. But after trying it a few times, I knew I wasn't going to find what I was looking for. Most of the men on Tinder, local to me, were just thirsty cutthroats that want to use you once or twice and then never see you again. I was a bit of a hopeless romantic, and I was starting to believe I was becoming more naive and gullible by holding out for the perfect man. That is until one night, when I got a random DM on Instagram from a super hot guy that was just my type. I didn't think it was too good to be true, I was just surprised that he would pursue me over everyone else. His name on Instagram was Anthony something, and his message read, Hey there beautiful. It took me a while to work up the courage to reply, but when I eventually did, I texted, Hi there, handsome. We hit it off fairly quickly and DM'd each other every now and then. On the third day, he asked me out on a date. I was a little anxious and wasn't exactly ready to see him yet, so I replied with no. Regardless, I found it a little strange that he would pitch to meet at a local hilltop for our first meeting. I always said I couldn't do it for one reason or another, but it became even more uncomfortable when he persisted with it. He would always send messages saying, How about that local hilltop today? It's beautiful weather right now. How about we go on a bike ride to the hilltop? I can't believe how many passes I gave him just because I thought he was hot. 
he asked me to go to the same hilltop every day for four days, and he would always shoot down any other date ideas. It was apparent that he was adamant about this hilltop. Eventually, it was the night before Valentine's Day, and I finally had some real time on my hands, but we still hadn't agreed on a date. That's when he asked me a different question, saying, I got us a present for Valentine's Day. Want to know what it is? I was curious, so I replied back with, Yes, I do. A few seconds later, he replies back with, I got us a nice hotel, and then a wink sign at the end. The way he brought it up made it seem like he booked an expensive room in the nicest hotel in town. But when he sent me the address, my heart sank. It wasn't nice at all. It was this dingy motel on the sketchy side of town. Suddenly, the proposition felt a lot scummier, but I gave him the benefit of the doubt, assuming he was tight on money. I was so excited to finally see him in person that I didn't care where it was, as long as it wasn't that stupid hilltop. After I showered, got dressed, and filled up on gas, I started driving across town to the motel. By then, it was after dark. The parking lot was almost full, so I parked near the lobby. I remember waving through the glass at the clerk behind the desk as I walked past the front building to the room number I was told to go to. I also remember him giving me a strange look that I couldn't understand, but I brushed it off and continued walking. When I got up to the right door, I knocked quietly so I wouldn't draw attention. Nobody answered after a minute, so I knocked again, louder this time. Still no answer. I pounded on the door several more times until it finally opened. <gasps> Revealing my most haunting, worst possible nightmare I could ever imagine. The man who opened the door was this gigantic slob that looked nothing like the Anthony I saw on Instagram. Um, I don't know if I have the right room. Is Anthony here? Yes, sweetheart. I'm Anthony. I felt like I was going to throw up. Everything hit me all at once as I realized I'd been such an idiot to let myself get catfished this bad on Valentine's Day. But as soon as I started to walk away, the sicko reached out and grabbed me by the waist and yanked me into the room like a rag doll. Everything crashed and burned in a matter of seconds. I started screaming for help as he slammed the door and threw me across the room onto the bed. Then, he started to undress as he blocked me in by standing in front of the only exit. He then started stripping down to his underwear as I frantically went to grab the lamp on the nightstand. But it was useless. The creep stomped toward me and smacked the lamp out of my hand. It pushed me over again, this time immediately getting on top of me. Get off of me! Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops! His sheer size and weight were enough to pin me down by the arms and legs and crush my chest so much I could barely breathe. I wailed one last time before he started to smother me. I thought I was about to die in my hotel room, but right as he crouched his face towards me, I heard the door open. Hey! The creep turned his head to the side just in time to get bashed in the face by a baseball bat. He lost his balance and was pushed over off of me onto the floor. That's when I finally saw who came in the room. It was the clerk from the front desk that I waved at a minute ago. Stay on the floor! You move and I bash your head in! I was too stunned to speak. I guess that motel clerk was used to seeing sketchy stuff at that motel and could tell when he needed to intervene. Thanks to his intuition, I'm alive. A few minutes later, the cops arrived and arrested Anthony. I gave my statement to the police and got an escort back home. I didn't sleep for weeks, and it only got worse when the story hit the news. It turns out that he was linked to the victims of several fatalities that were found at a local hilltop. The same thing he tried to get me to go to. It's no wonder why he was so persistent about it. It terrifies me knowing that could have easily been me. This story was inspired by a story of a psychotic man that used social media platforms like Instagram and Snapchat to lure his victims to a hilltop on Valentine's Day. As stated in the story, he has been linked to several cases. The username Anthony was of course just an alias. His real name is Keegan, and he has since been sentenced for his heinous crimes. Um, I don't know if I have the right room. Is Anthony here? Yes, sweetheart. I'm Anthony. 